Did desecration doom two schools? Do we still experience negative reverberations from a 19th century Christian clergyman's destruction of a possible sacred stone site? I'm author and researcher Mike Luoma. I investigate curious stone sites from my home base of Burlington, Vermont. Didn't have to go too far from home for this mystery in stone. Earlier this year, I began visiting Arms Forest and Lone Rock Point Peninsula here in Burlington, where I was surprised to discover possible Native American stonework. Just about on the border between them lies an old quarry. My growing impression as I visited was that this quarry was cut into something else, something older, and maybe something sacred. In assessing the stonework I was coming across here at Arms Forest, standing stones, terracing, even, surprising to me at the time, possible large-scale Great Serpent stonework, I began to suspect this quarry could have once been some sort of processional area coming up off the lake. The LIDAR shows this quarry lays at the head of a ravine, a natural path rising up out of Eagle Bay. Expanding my investigation onto the Lone Rock Point Peninsula brought more curious stonework into view, and also introduced me to the man who'd first bought and settled Rock Point, the Reverend John Henry Hopkins. He's actually been in the news recently. Students at the Rock Point School voted to have his portrait moved to a less public place after they discovered he'd offered a biblical justification for slavery during the Civil War. Yeah. But he was also an artist, a painter, a watercolorist, an architect who helped introduce Gothic architecture to the United States. And he was Burlington's first Episcopal bishop. He and his family settled Rock Point filling in hollows and dynamiting some of the ledges to level the land and make it usable. His family later gave the peninsula and the land to the Episcopal Church, who own it today. And they partner with the city and others to keep the place open for the public for recreation. Speaking of his family, the bishop's son, John Henry Hopkins Jr., composed the Christmas hymn, We Three Kings. And he also wrote a biography of his father, which in part chronicles their time on the peninsula. One chapter is titled Rock Point. But it's in a later chapter where I found this quarry. Some online guides to the Arms Forest say this quarry could have been used to build the Ethan Allen Tower and mention a brief commercial usage of the site in the 19th century. Or even that Bishop Hopkins may have used it as his son's biography speaks of them quarrying stone for the foundations of an institute built on the peninsula. All of these are, I believe, incorrect assumptions. No, this quarry is actually on old Rock Point property, on the old church farm. And in a later chapter, Junior describes it quite specifically. Quote, During the last year of my father's life, 1868, he set the quarrymen to work, and quarried out a large quantity of stone near a site on the church farm, where he had finally determined to place the girls' school. But he never saw even the cornerstone laid, and the quarried heaps have slept undisturbed since his departure. That was published in 1873, and that seems to describe this site to a T. I walked out past the quarry, on my way out of the Rock Point Paths after my first visit. It was getting dark, but I noticed as I walked down the driveway of the now-closed Burlington High School that it appeared they had sheared a mound in half to build the driveway. And this mound was at the top, the very top of the hill, from the quarry. It was too dark to see much, but I peeked around and what I saw made me come back the next day. Here, atop the quarry, more destruction. 
Not only had they sheared the mound in half, they seemed to have bulldozed it a bit, too. There are shaped stones all around. Possible wing forms. As if there were some sort of wing adorned platform here.
As I surveyed the destruction, the possible destruction, I couldn't help but notice we were right next to the tech center at the high school. This is where they first discovered toxic PCBs, which eventually turned the whole site toxic and forced them to close and then condemn the school building, originally constructed in 1964. You might have heard about it on the news. They converted the old Macy's downtown into the new temporary Burlington High School. The old building will be torn down. It's not salvageable. Condemned. It's doomed. And the girls' school the quarry was originally cut for was never even built. Hopkins' death was its doom. Two doomed schools right next to this quarry. That's the speculative journey my mind took off on as I surveyed what seemed to be a destroyed sacred space. Of course, this could just be a string of coincidences I'm tying together. And why would there be negative reverberations anyway? Because I believe Bishop Hopkins destroyed this space deliberately. And as a result of the disharmony and imbalance, doomed his girls' school and now, seven generations later, Burlington High School. Hopkins was an artist and architect. As an investigator of stone sites, my own artistic background and work in construction and understanding of spatial relationships help me see stone sites others may have missed. As a landscape painter and an architect, I find it all but impossible. Hopkins didn't have a similar eye for such work. As a noted clergyman of his day, he may have seen it his duty to destroy anything he found that looked like Native American holy sites as the limited understanding of his day saw the savages as devil worshippers. There have been several stone sites I've visited in Vermont where what appeared to be stonework seemed marred or destroyed deliberately. My conclusion is that settlers often destroyed anything that looked off to them, or which they thought was devil's work. And the quarry still sits there, the many quarried stones still sitting next to it, continuing to sleep undisturbed. Native Americans speak of ceremonial stone landscapes in the Northeast, comprised of stone prayers, stone constructions on the land, and tell us these were built to bring balance. At the very least, even innocently demolishing such a site could bring in balance, disharmony, doom. Conjecture? Perhaps. Sometimes what I do is more intuitive than scientific, and this is admittedly one of those cases, stemming from an increasing sense of wrongness from the quarry and the hillside site above it. I'm author and researcher Mike Luoma, offering up these ideas as food for your thoughts. Not being able to prove or disprove some of this, much remains a mystery. Another ancient stone mystery of New England.